Good morning, everyone out there on the interwebs. My name is Jared, and this is my channel, Mazda B3K. In today's second episode of the 5 Minute Fix series, I'm going to show you how do you use an OBD2 scanner. Without further ado, let's get started. First things first, OBD2 stands for Onboard Diagnostic Version 2. Version 1 came out in the late 80s and the early 90s and it was kind of all over the place every manufacturer had their own version of it and it's kind of like reading tea leaves to get information out of it my uh, truck over here uses OBD1 Ford's OBD1 and it does have some basic testing it does have a basic check engine light but ugh. it's a mess you pretty much are better off being an old school mechanic trying to figure things out that way versus using the onboard computer. It's, uh, it's a little special. So I don't have one active now, but you would want to use an OBD2 sensor uh, reader at the very minimum if you're looking at your instrument cluster and you've got some kind of a check engine light on. You may have a light that says check engine, you may have a light that says service. You may have a light that illuminates and just shows a picture of an engine. That's what this car does. It's located between the speedometer in the middle and the tachometer on the left. There's a little light. Lights up. But if you have that, it's time to go get a reader or go to your local auto parts store and go borrow one for free and read codes and see what's up. Okay, this is my OBD2 reader. Mine still has an actual cord you got to plug in. But uh, this one's a little bit on the fancier side. It, uh, not only will it give me trouble codes, which is what the OBD2 system does, is it basically it checks the engine and if it finds a problem, it'll report it back. Uh, but it can clear codes and it also can read live data. So to connect it, first thing you have to do is you do have to locate your OBD2 port, which they vary in location depending on make, model, manufacturer, all that good stuff. But the one on this particular Fusion is located here under the steering column behind this little door. So just pop the door down, there's your connector. in just plug it in and then mine is going to automatically try to talk to the car figure out what language to use so to speak talk to it and it says yep I was able to do it and it comes back and says hey I have a trouble code okay so uh, right now I have a P0456 which I knew about that is because there's a seal on the fuel filler neck it's not working right and the stuff in red are the various modules that are affected by that it's a minor issue I'm not worried about it because I actually have the part to fix it that'll be another video so if you have a more simple reader this may just give you a code and that's it. To say P, P0456, it won't tell you what's going on and you'll need to take that code, feed it into the search engine of your choice, Google, Bing, whatever, and it'll return what that code is and what you may need to do to fix it. Okay, one of the features of a code reader is that you can erase the codes because sometimes a code will go away after you make a change, right? And if you want to clear those codes quickly to see what you're dealing with, uh, there normally will be a button on mine. It's this red one here. I'll say you want to do it, yes or no. In my case, no. Don't want to do that right now. And also, I can do live data. I have a button for that. And what this does is it talks to your car, and it will pull up all sorts of interesting data about fuel trims and engine temps and load and all this other good stuff. So for another video I'm making, this is kind of important. This is the temperature of the engine right now. 
You can say it, it's, it's cool, but it is warming up. But you can look at engine temps, you can look at fuel trims, you can look at, uh, this is your manifold absolute pressure sensor, and it's in measured in mercury, that's what HG is. Engine RPM, all sorts of good stuff. And another thing that I can do, uh, yours may not be able to do, is I can actually run system test and I can reset stuff, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, when you are done, uh, you just unplug from the car and your unit may have a battery, it may not. This one has a battery, so I have to actually turn it off. If you have a more simple one, it will not have a battery, and as soon as you disconnect it from the car, it has no power, it'll turn off. That's going to do it for episode two of the five minute fix series, all about OBD2 readers. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, leave me some comments. And until next time, I will see you later.